Hello again friends. In this video tutorial, I'll be talking about passive transport. We've been talking about the membrane transport. We have already seen uh, all the different summary of the membrane transport like active transport, passive transport, what are the difference between both of them and what are the different features. Now here in this video, I'll be focusing mainly on the passive mode of transport. Now membrane transport means obviously we are talking about moving molecules across the cell membrane. And you know cell membrane is lipid bilayer, right? So two layers of lipid molecules are making it. So if you look at here in the cell membrane structure, it will look something like this. Uh, just drawing an arbitrary way. These are the phospholipid head and this is the hydrophobic tails. Hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tails. Okay. Like this. So let's say this is the cell membrane and this is also the membrane and the overall cells cross section view of the cell well this is the inside this is the outside of the cell similarly let's say this is outside and this is inside okay so what happens in passive transport there are very few properties of passive transport to be remembered of that is passive transport do not require any sort of atp or energy for that why? Because in passive transport, molecules are moving from the high concentration towards the low concentration. So it's a move of movement of down the concentration gradient. So we don't require anything. Just you know, if there's a slope like that, you just put something on the top, it will easily fall down. It's like. So here it's commonly known as the diffusion, where the molecule is moving from high concentration towards the low concentration of that molecule. So this is basic diffusion. Diffusion is the chemical process by which passive transport occurs all the time. So what molecules uh, cell uptake by this diffusion mode? Many molecules. Among them very small molecules and majorly gas, gaseous substances. So many gaseous substances example is oxygen, carbon dioxide and so on. These are the two major gases that the cell needs to transport through the cell membrane. So that's why I write them down. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, the example. So these molecules can easily diffuse through the cell membrane, through this bilayer, okay? Because remember, this is the hydrophobic layer and these are the philic layer, philic layer, okay? Phobic and philic. So this is the idea, okay? So oxygen and carbon dioxide can easily pass through this hydrophobic core region of the membrane easily, okay? as the small molecules and they can easily diffuse as their gases. Now in some other molecules, they, they also transfer from high concentration to the low concentration, but they cannot do that directly through the cell membrane on its own, okay? Because there is a large portion of hydrophobicity and there are plenty of molecules in our body which are hydrophilic in nature. That means they will not contact with hydrophobic conditions they a hydrophobic lipids will never going to trying to contact with it it's not possible right so for those hydrophilic molecules and slightly bigger molecules like example is water or different ions let's say sodium potassium calcium those are the ions they can also move from high to low concentration using diffusion but they need a helper molecule or helper protein to be present in the cell membrane to transport them Okay, so they just need a helping hand, a helping protein to do that. And there are helping proteins present in the cell membrane. Okay, let's say this is one example. This is the membrane protein which can uptake water easily inside the cell, for example. And the name of this protein is aquaporin. Aquaporin. Why porin? It's like a pore formation of the pore uh, in the cell membrane. Aqua because it transports water. So using this aqua porin, cell can uptake water, okay, inside the cell. But in this case also water travels from high concentration to the low concentration. But the difference is in this case, they require a helping protein, okay. Diffusion with a facility provided by a protein. 
So this system, this process is known as facilitated diffusion. Diffusion helped by other proteins. Similarly, there are also ions that can move from one place to another place using this type of proteins, facilitated diffusion. Now, what type of proteins that we see in facilitated diffusion, okay? Now, there are proteins, most of the proteins that they design here, having hydrophilic regions in both these sides so that it can interact with hydrophilic molecules, okay? Because that's the only problem with the hydrophobic layer of the membrane. If, if they also by inbuilt having those hydrophilic layers, then molecules can easily pass, but that's not the true thing, okay? Now, this type of proteins can be of two different types, mainly they can be of two different types, okay? One is known as, you know, uh, so let me write them. So, carrier protein or channel protein. These are the two types of protein that we can see. Carrier protein and channel protein. Now, carrier proteins are again of different types, but these are the major two. Channel means a protein simply creates small pore, right? Just like the aquaporin. This is a channel protein. And there are also channel proteins like sodium channel, potassium channel, ion, I mean different calcium channel. They are known as ion channel proteins. Channel protein structure is very simple and easy. Let's say in this DNA membrane, if I draw the channel protein, it will look something like this. Let's say here and here. So it looks something like this. And these are the two different units of the protein. And actually, I make this region like that but actually if you look at here from the top it's the three dimensional barrel shaped protein right just a barrel with with a pore inside okay because it's a cross section view i draw it this way now molecules can easily pass through this channel okay this is known as channel protein no other function helps molecules to be passed down their concentration gradient sorry second type is a carrier proteins Carrier proteins are slightly different. In carrier proteins, they have specific structures, different types of structure. And they have multiple ligand binding side. Okay. Like say, let me draw it here. It's, it's a horrible drawing, by the way, but I'm making it quick. Okay. Now, here the carrier protein, it will look something different. Let's say, let's say this. This is a carrier protein. Okay, and as you see, it closed here. It is closed, okay, and it has two different sides. For example, here and here, for example. This is a side, and also it has some side like that here, okay. Now, let's say the idea is we need to take a molecule out or in. For example, let's say we are taking something in. This is outside. This is inside, okay? Now, let's say the molecule of our interest binds here that we need to take inside. And it also requires energy sometimes or sometimes may not. Now, let's say if, if it does not require energy or something. They require another molecule. Let's say that molecule, this one. Once this ligand binds along with our interest of protein, then only it will go through a structural change, okay? And then it will open up and then that molecule can pass, okay? So this always happens. Upon binding of either the molecule of interest or upon binding of a third molecule, a ligand to the channel, to that specific protein, 
the structural conformation is changed and then only the protein of our interest can be uptaken or can be released outside. This is known as carrier protein. Okay, so the carrier protein from outside into the inside or from inside to the outside. Okay, slightly more complicated. And actually, these carrier proteins are mostly found in active transport. Okay, but also in passive transport, there are some carrier proteins. Okay, while there are some simple carrier proteins, well as sodium binds, then the carrier will change its structure and sodium can come inside. Okay, then let's say, uh, let's say, so uh, channel structure like this. Okay, sodium binds here, then it folds back like that and sodium come inside. Similarly, we have other proteins like calcium channels and different ion channel proteins out there like this. Okay. Now, if we go through this carrier protein and different names of the carrier, there are different varieties and types of carrier proteins out there. The examples of carrier proteins, voltage gated carrier, voltage gated, ligand gated and ligand could be of intracellular as well as extracellular ligand. Intra intracellular ligand or extracellular ligand binding ligand gated okay voltage gated ligand gated these are the two major types of uh, carrier proteins that we find okay so what happens here in the voltage gated uh, channel in the voltage gated channel the channel will open if the membrane potential alters okay membrane potential means membrane always have a charge outside and inside okay let's say like this now once this charge shifted or it matches a specific potential then only uh, the carrier molecule will open and bring the molecule inside this is called voltage gated ligand gated means i told you a ligand a specific ligand will come and bind upon the binding of the ligand only the channel will open otherwise it will not open okay so these are the two types in normally extracellular ligand is example i told you i have shown you the example in intracellular case it's also known as signal gated so let's say chemical signaling is going on cell signaling is going on inside the cell in intracellular space at the sum of that molecule can go and bind to the intracellular binding side of that molecule that can trigger to open that cell okay that is the example of signal gated ion channel okay signal gated carrier channel molecules or these are the ion channels also okay different types of mainly these are ion channel uh, that we know okay because uh, those those channels uh, are mainly depending on voltage or ligand mainly ions to uptake some uh, ions from outside or uh, remove some ions uh, to outside from inside that's why we use this type of channel molecules okay so this in a sense is a passive transport with facilitated diffusions and different types of channel proteins that are present and different types of ion channels that we can have okay and all of them plays vital role in different cases and different purposes uh, for us and then finally provide us so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and definitely share this video as much as you can thank you